So this mom influencer is shopping at an arts and crafts store with her kids, and she suddenly notices something suspicious. There appeared to be someone following her around the store, a Latino couple, and they were eyeing her kids. So she overhears this couple, and they're on the phone, and they're describing her kids' features, blonde hair, blue eyes, stuff like that. And they keep following her down every aisle. So she just like leaves the store and goes to her car and the Latino couple follows her out there and they like start circling her car and they even approached her son's stroller. And she gets so scared and then she asks someone for help. And then the Latino couple, they just bounce, they flee. So the mom influencer, she calls the police and she tells them what happened. And they do like a police report. A week later, she makes a video about what happened and she posts it to her Instagram. My children were the targets of attempted kidnap. She then goes on to describe what happened, but she adds this little detail. In that last time, he reaches for the stroller. He reaches for the stroller. And this detail becomes very important. So her video blows up because, you know, the story's compelling and her audience is very supportive. I'm so sorry that happened to you. I hope they get caught. Why would you want someone else's kids? So then the police contacted her and they were suddenly very interested in that little detail she added to the story. He reaches for the stroller. Because if the Latino couple actually reached for the stroller, that escalates the case from, you know, some weirdo just following them around the store to an actual attempted kidnapping. And that is a much bigger deal and a different type of investigation. With that change, the police were able to use their resources and find the Latino couple. Shown here, this is actually them. And since they were now suspects in this case, they were publicly accused. And of course they denied it. This is probably the worst thing I could ever imagine being accused of. Then the police were finally able to get a hold of the security footage from the store and they reviewed it. And guess what they saw? Absolutely nothing. No one followed the mom influencer around the store. No one approached her. No one grabbed her stroller. The mom influencer's story was complete bullshit. The only thing that was real was the Latino couple, but they were just there. They were just shopping like anyone else. They didn't do anything wrong. That means the mom influencer not only lied to her audience in this video here, but she called the police about a crime that didn't happen and lied to them. Anyway, she was charged with making a false report of a crime and she's in jail now. What the hell were you thinking? Also, this all happened in Sonoma, California. So shout out to California. So this TikToker got pregnant by her boyfriend this guy. And then sadly, about 30 days after the baby was born, the boyfriend allegedly abandons them to move in with his ex-girlfriend. So Morgan, her, her name's Morgan, Morgan starts making TikToks about her experience as a single mother. And her account starts to blow up, because, you know, she's likable and funny, but she made sure to keep his identity anonymous, only referring to him as the random man in Atlanta. This baby, she's from a random man in Atlanta. So then one day, her ex, the random man in Atlanta, the real guy, he saw her videos. So then he gets on TikTok to deny he's a deadbeat. Morgan lies so good. Morgan can sell goddamn ice to an Eskimo. And it was there in these videos that he admits to being the father of six kids. That's six kids with six different women. Jesus. So his response videos, they start blowing up because now we're in some drama and the comments are just not being kind to him. What a loser. Such a deadbeat. Bro, are you allergic to condoms? So then out of nowhere, guess who decides to suddenly weigh in? I'm baby mama number one, by the way. Yeah, his other baby mamas get on TikTok and they start weighing in one by one. I'm baby mama number two. He doesn't call. He hasn't called. He doesn't help with anything. Yeah, and then of course, baby mama three had to make a TikTok. Really, he brought this upon himself for everybody to be popping out the woodworks or whatever. And then we find out that these two baby mamas, their babies were born eight days apart. So, uh... Do that math. Then we have baby mama four, and she doesn't make a video, but she does come forward on Twitter posting this. And of course, we can't forget baby mama number five. I came on here to reveal who baby mama number five was, and that's me. And then baby mama number six, she didn't have to come forward because we already know that's Morgan. But then baby mama number five starts beefing with baby mama number six over who random man in Atlanta's main chick was and who the side chick was. He cheated on you with me. No, baby. And fans see this and they're going nuts. They love the drama. They're like making diagrams and shit. As y'all can see, our baby mama chart, AKA motherboard has already been completed. But the best part is when baby mama number six gets a phone call. I just got a phone call from baby mama. I don't even know. First time hearing about her ever today. So Morgan finds out she's not actually baby mama number six. She's baby mama number seven. <laughs> because another woman had come forward. So Morgan got demoted from six to seven. Oh. 
But I'm happy to report none of the baby mamas are beefing at the moment. They all seem to be chill with one another now. So, and, you know, that's probably best for the kids. And Random Man, well, he's still out there and he's still insisting he's not a deadbeat. Anyway, I wish them all the best. <laughs> This is allegedly the richest girl on TikTok. This is Flo, and one day she posted a video talking about the first car she's gonna get, a Lamborghini Urus. Get ready with me to buy my first car. So the car I wanna get is a Lamborghini Urus. We're going to Manhattan to get it. And even though that car costs like more than my life, the way she talked about it was very matter of fact. Looking at a used one, but it's like pretty much new and it's exactly how we would get it if we were to like design it. And this of course upset people because it just seems really out of touch. But then the worst thing happened to Flo. The worst thing that could ever happen to anyone in the history of humanity. I just got the worst news of my life. The Lamborghini I wanted got sold. Like, I don't even know how she could cope with such a devastating loss. But it wasn't until she said this. I don't know what's so hard to believe about getting a Lambo. Like, they're not even that expensive. <laughs> Come again? That people started to question if this is real or not. She's not rich. This is all fake. Show us the car. Or you're a liar. And yeah, is she lying? I mean, it's weird. She does film in a huge house, but oddly that huge house seems to be unfurnished for some reason. So then one day Flo makes a video and says she got the Lamborghini and she wants to show us. My dad finally bought one for me. And that's great. And we could finally see if this is all fake or not. But of course, Flo isn't happy with the car. The only issue is that it's a 2022 model and it has like 10,000 miles on it, so it's used. But I don't care too much because I only have to drive it for one year until my new one comes. And then, right before she reveals it to us, her account gets banned. What the f***? So why did she get banned? Well, the speculation is that her content was making people so mad they were mass reporting her videos. That's the speculation. So I guess we'll never know. Like, is she super rich? Did she ever get that sick land? Wait, wait, wait. I, I actually have an update on this. Like I was literally about to upload and I saw TikTok unbanned her account. I'm back. And it looks like she, uh, she got her Lambo. I was legit about to be like, I don't know guys, I think maybe she's playing us. But uh, there you have it. So this woman, let's call her Bull. And Bull has a big problem. She's dead. She's in the middle of getting heart surgery and she dies right there on the operating table. So she's lying there, dead, for about three minutes. And the doctors, they know what to do. So they electrocute her back to consciousness. And she's alive again. But she's not better. Because later, doctors diagnose her with a brain tumor. A really bad one. And they only give her four months to live. So Bull does chemotherapy, she does radiation. But unfortunately, nothing beats this cancer. So she starts to take a different route alternative medicines. And she starts getting better and her cancer starts to stabilize. And she ends up living way past the four month mark. Yeah! Until Bull decides to share her story on Instagram and she starts pushing the alternative cures that helped her. And things really take off for her. I mean, people love her. I mean, her Instagram blows up. She gets lots of fans, tons of support. She creates a wellness app and the app is so popular. Apple wants to partner with her and make it available on the Apple Watch. She creates a cookbook. She raises a bunch of money and donates it to charity. Things are going really well for her. Until Bull gets more cancer. Not only does she have it in her brain, she has it in her blood, her spleen, her liver, all kinds of places. Oh, but it's not over for Bull. During her rise to fame, she's posting more, she's giving more interviews, and she starts to claim that all of her cancer and health issues started back when she got the HPV vaccine. Basically saying a cancer vaccine ended up giving her cancer. Huh? And this immediately makes a lot of people skeptical. And that skepticism grew, and it grew, and it grew, and then journalists started to investigate her. Then, all of a sudden, boom, Bull makes front page news. Five charities she claimed she had donated to never got the money. Four of those charities didn't even know she was supposed to be raising money for them. So then where did all that money go? So that news about the charities just opens the floodgates. And suddenly every journalist in Australia is digging into her past, trying to see if she lied about anything else. Like, did she really die for three minutes during heart surgery? Did she really have all kinds of cancer in a bunch of places? And did her alternative treatments really help that cancer? And then all of a sudden her social media, where she was once loved, was now filled with nothing but hate. And poor Bull, she doesn't know what to do. She's removing comments, she's deleting her own posts that reference the cancer. Then it comes out that she spent that missing charity money on herself. Leasing a luxury car, vacations, clothes, new veneers, and people are pissed because they were lied to. Then Apple removes her app from the app store and the book publisher withdraws her book from sale. And during all this chaos, Bull is like, 
okay, I can fix this. I just have to do an interview. So she sits down to do an interview with the Australian Women's Weekly. And it goes about as well as you would expect. I mean, pretty quickly, the interviewer asks her if she has or has ever had cancer. And to everyone's surprise, Bull doesn't lie. She actually says, quote, no, none of it is true. <laughs> So why did she say she had cancer when she clearly didn't? Well, in a later interview, Bull actually claims that her doctor had tricked her into believing she had cancer. And of course, journalists look into this and it turns out that doctor doesn't exist. So that was also a lie. Now, eventually the Australian government, they investigate all this and they end up fining Bull like $410,000 for making false claims about donations to charity. Then she doesn't show up to any of her court dates. She doesn't pay any of her fines. And eventually police have to come raid her house and seize items to recoup the unpaid fines. A year later, the fines still weren't paid off and they raided her house again. And all this happened in Melbourne, Australia, so shout out to Australia. So this Italian YouTuber, he messed up big time. Now his name's Matteo and he has a YouTube channel with his friends and they call themselves The Borderline. And these guys basically do a lot of challenges, like living in a cardboard box for 50 hours, spending 24 hours on a raft, and they got a pretty big following over in Italy. And one day, they decide they're gonna film themselves spending 50 consecutive hours in a car. And of course, that video blows up. So they decide to do it again, but this time in a Tesla. And that does really well, so they decide to do it a third time, but this time in a Lamborghini Urus. So these guys, they go out and rent this Urus, and they're having a great time in it. They're speeding around the city, they're taunting slower cars, here they are getting a little fast food. The challenge seems to be going well. Now Matteo, he's driving, and allegedly he wants to see how fast the Urus can go. But there's a car in front of them, and it's kind of going slow. So Matteo decides to overtake it and pass it. And the other YouTubers in the car, they're trying to film all this. Okay, while they're doing all that, let's talk about this other woman. Let's just call her Mama. So Mama picks up her two kids from kindergarten. The son is five, the daughter's three. And she buckles them in, and she drives away in her little smart car. And she's on the road for a bit, probably, you know, listening to the radio or asking the kids what they did at school today. Meanwhile, Mateo and the borderline are passing that slow car that was in front of them. And they pull into Mama's lane, and Mama's car and the borderline's Urus collide. <laughs> nearly head on. And this isn't like a small fender bender. This is a brutal crash. And mama and the daughter survived. But unfortunately, the five-year-old son did not. So Mateo goes to jail, and allegedly they find cannabis in his system. And he's on house arrest while being investigated for vehicular homicide. Also, the whole borderline group posts a written apology video on YouTube. Sorry, it's in Italian, but they basically say it's morally impossible to continue on this path. And they're not gonna make any more online content. They're done. Then YouTube just straight up demonetized their entire channel. Also, this happened months ago in Rome, Italy, so shout out to Italy.